a ministry that teaches honesty, speaks on transparency, and the Word of God. Welcome to Greater Works Community Fellowship Church, Church of God in Christ, encouraging God's people to encourage the world. Now, let's prepare our hearts, mind, and our spirit to hear the Word of God, be moved by the Word of God, and be encouraged to act on God's church, God's Word, and minister to the nations. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome into the room. Let's give him praise this morning. Let's glorify and magnify our holy Lord because we are in a situation where God has been good to us. God is holy. And because of that, we must reverence him on this morning. So let's take this few fleeting moments to give God praise and give him glory. For the, all the praises are due him. We give him all the glory and all the honor on this morning. For God woke us up this morning. He allowed us to be in our right mind. He gave us activity of our limbs. And so we praise him this morning. And we worship him. As you come into the room, I just implore each and every one of you, just give God praise. Press the P button on your keyboard. P, 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 praise, praise. Let's give God praise. Let's worship him. Let's enter into a spirit of worship this morning because God is on the throne and he sits on the throne and we worship him on this morning. Give him glory. Let's honor him on this morning. Let's take our minds off our issues. Let's take our minds off our worries, all the troubles that we've been faced with during the course of the week. Let's focus on him on this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will, O oh God. We surrender ourselves to you. We surrender our way to, uh, to you, O oh God. We lift you up on this morning. We reverence you, O oh God. We reverence you on this morning. And we worship you. But don't you feel better? Hallelujah. Don't you feel better that you've given him space on this morning to worship him? It's good to worship him in the morning. To reflect on his goodness and his mercy reflect all that he has done for us. We just give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We just give God glory this morning. Continue to worship him. Continue to worship him. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm just rejoicing in the Lord on this morning, for God is truly good to his people. My name is Pastor Gordon McKinney. I'm the pastor of Greater Works Community Fellowship in the town of Wake Forest, North Carolina. And I thank God for all those who are tuning in uh, through Facebook Live. We thank God for all the members and all our visitors. We welcome you on this morning. And before we start, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of coming together. God, we thank you for that you allow us to be here another Sunday and we can reflect on your holy word, oh God. God, I ask that you bless us during this time, move during this service, oh God. God, heal during the service, set the captives free during the service. Have your way, oh God, and allow us to sync up to your will, oh God. And God, we just give you praise and give you glory for the glory and honor it all belongs to you and all these things we pray in jesus precious holy name amen amen this morning i'm going to be reading from the book the gospel of mark we're going to be looking at the second chapter i'll be reading from verses 1 through 12 the gospel of mark second chapter 1 through 12, I'll be reading from the NIV. And the scripture reads, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and lowered the mat 
the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Verse 9 says, now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow think like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew his spirit, that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Verse 12 goes on to say, he got up, he took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. God, we just thank you for this word. We ask that you just bless and we just receive this powerful story, this powerful gospel, this powerful word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we look at this particular scripture, uh, we must understand no matter how bad the struggle, no matter how bad we things look during the process, we must have it made up in our hearts and our minds that the Lord will meet all of our needs. Today, I'd like to discuss this, this particular miracle. As Jesus performs a, 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 in a town called Capernaum, we look at this, as we look at this event, I, I want to cover three words that glare at me and stand out as I read this, this particular pa these passages. One word I, I want to bring out is the word brotherhood, brotherhood. Second word I want to bring out is breaches, breaches. And the third, breakthroughs, brotherhood, breaches, and breakthroughs. Let's look at brotherhood. We look at verses one through four in this particular scripture. It says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in a such large number that they were uh, no room left. It was booked. So that's one thing about Jesus. He packed the houses. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made a opening on the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the mat the man was laying on. You see there is a difference between uh, as we look at this scenario there's a difference between the crowd of people and the men I call I will call them the brothers the men that carried the paralyzed man. Difference between the men that carried the paralyzed man was the and the crowd. The crowd was there because they were there focusing in on themselves. They wanted to hear a word for themselves. And they wanted to see uh, the move of God for themselves. But there's it's different for the brothers the men that carried the paralyzed man. Yes, I'm sure that the men that carried the paralyzed man, they wanted to see what Jesus was talking. They wanted to, they were concerned about the move of God, but they also was concerned about this paralyzed man to the point where they did all they could to make sure that this man could see Jesus. They went through the crowd. They they, they not only went through the crowd, they, they climbed with this paralyzed man to the top of the roof. And then not only did they climbed to the top of the roof, they dug a hole to get to Jesus so that this man could receive his blessing. Brotherhood. When brothers work together to, 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 and they're concerned about their fellow man, 
It's just something in it, in that act, is something to be marveled. Crowds are good. Don't get me wrong. It is something to see when we see the saints of God coming together and, and worshiping and, and, and the advent of the mega church that we see today. That's, that's wonderful. But I truly believe that there are so many people that go to these mega churches and they forget about service to their brothers and sisters. They, it's all about me, 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 me. How can I help others? That it gets lost in the crowd. And I want to highlight today that these brothers, these men, that they were so concerned, even though they were in the midst of Jesus Christ, they wanted to see this man healed, this man made whole, this, this man that was paralyzed, that couldn't walk, that couldn't uh, maneuver, could not, that was not able to do the things that healthy men were able to do. These brothers were concerned about him to the point where they broke the roof, climbed the house, broke the roof, and lowered him to Jesus. This brings me to the second point. Breaches. Breaches. What is a breach? What does the term breach mean? Breach means to... to to fail to observe the law. It also means to break, to, 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 uh, to undo, to break. And so here we see a breach taking place, several breaches taking place. Verses 5 through 7 reads, when Jesus saw their faith, he saw the paralyzed man. Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? As we look at this scene, we see a, a broken roof. We see a lower person. We see crowded space. We see Jesus say to the sick man, your sins are forgiven. Did he say, I forgive you for breaking the, the roof? No. He looked at this man, this paralyzed man. He, he saw what was going on in his heart. And that was more important for him to receive, his, his, in, for, in order for him to receive his healing, there was an issue going on in his heart. He saw that this faith, he saw that this man's faith, he knew that if he was able to see Jesus, his, his issues would, could be changed in a moment's notice. But Jesus said something to this man. He, he said that your sins are forgiven. I don't know what this man was going through. He could have been harboring bitterness. He could have been harboring anger because of his situation. He could have been harboring spite. But I do know that forgiveness is a crucial part and a crucial step in receiving your breakthrough. I just want to say, someone type, let it go. Let it go. If you, if you have some issues going on and, and it's preventing you to, to receive your miracle, you need to go to God and say, God, forgive me of this anger, this spite, this thing that is holding me captive. And in the eye of Jesus, he saw this paralytic man had an issue, and he went to the heart of it. He said, look, you're going to have to let it go, and your sins must be forgiven. Once these sins are forgiven, then the Lord is free to do and heal this man's body. See, on this day, the brothers helped the ailing man enter into a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus forgave his sins. But here, this is where the breach comes in. Theologian uh, Kierkegaard would refer to this act as the theological 
suspension of the ethical. You see, not only uh, we have a damaged roof, you have Jesus claiming to have the power to forgive sins. To the teachers in the crowd, they, they saw a, a breach taking place. They saw a situation where we see a, 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 a godly man making a staking a claim that they could not quite fully understand. But one of the things that they did not see, that we do see, that Jesus came as a fulfillment of the law. Sometimes when you fulfill the law, when, he, when he, he was as the fulfillment of the law, he did things that weren't politically correct at that time. And Jesus saw that this man's need was to be forgiven of his sins before this healing was to take place. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. So we have the brotherhood that helped assist this scenario in allowing Jesus to see this paralyzed man. But then we have this a number of break, uh, shall I say, a, a, a number of breaches that took place. Jesus, with all his infinite wisdom, addressed them. And then thirdly, we have breakthrough. Verse 8 through 12 reads, immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Basically, they were thinking that, who is this guy coming to talk about that he can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. Verse 9 says, which is easier to say that to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up. Take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the man, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home. And he got up and he took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone. And they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. As we look at this breakthrough of healing that took place, we must observe that Jesus didn't follow the naysayers. He continued to by showing the teachers the power of God. You see, haters are going to hate. Talkers are going to talk. Walkers are going to walk. And the day Jesus showed the teachers that the true power of God was here in his authority. We must have a true understanding that God has the ability to feed the hungry, give sight to the blind. We must understand that God has the ability to make the lame walk. God has the ability to, 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 to lit, raise up the dead. We must have an understanding that God can do all of these things. And our breakthrough is at his Command. We can't be overly concerned about what people are saying about the move of God. All we have to do is be concerned about, is he moving in our lives? Is he moving in our day-to-day -day lives? Is he moving in, 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 in the fact that we come to him? And, and as we come to him, we uh, must have hope and believe that our situations, no matter how bleak they seem, God has the ability to tell us, Take your bed, take your mat, take your, your, your stuff, and walk. That paralyzed man never thought in a million years that that day he would receive his healing. But guess what? He did. Many of us are like this, this paralyzed man. We feel that we are doomed to our plight in life. But today, you too can receive your healing. Jesus says something that is amazing to me. He tells the man, and the man was lowered with the mat. The man, all he knew was this mat that he was with. 
this this thing that that reminded him of his 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 sickness is is this thing that reminded him of his inability to walk he had this mat all he knew that this mat was with him and on the day he received healing the first thing one of the first thing jesus says you're healed but take your mat and get on what it's saying is remember this thing because this mat was a, a a symbol of your past but guess what you no longer need this mat for day to day uh to, to, to because you were uh, you you don't have the ability to walk you can take your mat you don't have to lay on your mat you can take your mat today and walk we all have the ability to take our stuff and keep on going We, Jesus is telling this man, don't forget what I've done for you. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. This man was made whole and he was a spectacle. So they all saw the miracle take place. They saw, all saw the power of God take place in his life. And that's why it's an imperative. It's important for us as believers when we receive our healing, we need to let people know so that they can, too, can see that God is still in the healing business. God is still in, in opening up doors. God still has the ability to, 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 to correct and, and, and solve and, and create healthy relationships out of bad relationships, can create loving relationships out of hateful and spiteful relationships. God has the ability to change your situation this day. Brothers and sisters, there was a brotherhood, breach, and breakthrough. On this morning, I pray that we're not overly concerned about the crowds. We need to be concerned about our brothers. Scripture says, are you, are you my brother's keeper? Yes, you are your brother's keeper. We need to be concerned about each other. We need to check up on each other. During this pandemic, we need to make calls to our, our family members, the seniors and the widows. We need to do all we can to reach out to make sure that they too have the ability to, to see Jesus and have access to Jesus. Reach as we as we do things, we may seem politically incorrect, but guess what? God can make what seems wrong right, and a miracle can take place through that breach. And expect your breakthrough. Expect God opening up doors for you. Expect your healing. You have to have hope that God has the ability to change. The scripture says we are healed by the blood of the lamb. By his stripes, the scripture proclaims, we are healed. You see, Jesus died on the cross. And because of his death, we too could have everlasting life, but as a byproduct of his stripes, but as a byproduct of his sacrifice, as a byproduct of the blood that was shed for us, we are healed. And I implore you on this morning, it is through brotherhood, preaches, and breakthrough, this miracle was able to be a spectacle for all to see. The Lord blessed on that day. Let's prepare for communion. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, verses 23 through 26. And the scripture reads, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This morning we reflect on the power of love, the power of Jesus Christ as he gave his life, the love that he gave his life for us so that we could have eternal life. And we reflect on that last intimate evening he had with his disciples. During that meeting, he gave thanks for all that he experienced. He gave thanks for the meal. He gave thanks for God is good. After he gave thanks, he took the bread and said, this bread is a symbol of my body. My body will be broken for you. Take, break, and eat. And later that evening, he took the cup, the cup of wine. He said, this wine represents the blood that will be shed for the remissions of sins. This blood, this, 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 this wine is the new covenant. Take, drink, drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just thank you and give you praise. And we ask that you continue to bless. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank God for each and every one of you joining in today. I pray that this word resonated with you. I pray that God will continue to bless you during the course of this week. Uh, we want to just, uh, I want to mention that June 20th, we're going to have a Father's Day meeting. We want to invite everyone to come. We're going to have a good Lord. We're going to have praise in the parking lot. I want to invite all fathers, everybody to come, and we're just going to celebrate you on June 20th. Sunday the 20th, 1428 Wall Road in the town of Wake Forest. I will see you there. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, oh God. We thank you that you still are in the healing business. God, we thank you that you come to be the fulfillment of the law. And God, in this, God, we have confidence, oh God, that you will meet our needs. Lord, we ask that you bless all those who are in lack, oh God. God, we ask that you Give those who are dealing with sickness, ailments, God, healing in Jesus' name. We know that you are our healer. You are our provider. And we come to you, O oh God. God, we just bless your holy name on this morning. And all these things we praise. We praise you, O oh God. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. I pray that you have a prosperous week. May God continue to overtake you. Take care. Thank you for listening to Greater Works Community Fellowship Church of God in Christ this morning. We encourage everyone to attend our virtual Sunday school at 9 a.m. Learn the word of God through various teachers and preachers in our ministry. And make sure to join us every Wednesday evening for Bible study. We are currently surveying the entire Bible. The Lord is blessing us as we systematically pursue the Holy Scriptures. And join us every Friday morning for our 6 a.m. weekly prayer call. The number and code information is posted on your screen. And you can also view it on our Facebook page and website. We want to thank every everybody for diligently giving to our ministry. Remember, you have various ways to give. You can give through Givelify. Just type Greater Works Community Fellowship. You will find our ministry. You can also give on Cash App. Just type in dollar sign GWCF Ministries. We will be there. Finally, you can pay through PayPal by going to our website at shalloudo.org. There you will see the PayPal insignia. And we encourage everyone to visit our YouTube channel at the Shall You Do channel. You will find our ministry content on demand. Like it, subscribe, and share. Every time we upload new content, you will be notified so you can view all of our on-demand messages. Music provided by Garland Guillon. This is a 2021 Greater Works Community Fellowship Church. All rights reserved.